Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. As I do adjust this mic, there we go. Looks like it's in the right position. Hey, want to be wishing you a very happy, very special uh, Friday. Yeah, you made it all the way to Friday. Doesn't mean anything because cryptocurrency is a 24-7 market, but <laughs> enjoy your night. Of course, as always, want to be wishing you well, want to be wishing you the best of the best. And let's get into the live scene right over here as Bitcoin has done so much, but so little. Oh, and that's right. <laughs> Got to remind myself to, again, talk about my own things. I have to set this up beforehand just so I remember, but overall, all my programs are on sale for the rest of the month as it is the one-year anniversary of this community with the code YEAR20. That is Y-E-A-R in all capitals and then the number is 20. And that goes for every one of the programs and every one of the payment plans. I think I have payment plans up to about 10 months on just about every one of them. The Trade Like a Professional program is the all-encompassing technical analysis program, which also includes risk and position management, also understanding underlying market dynamics, and also, of course, several bonus modules plus access into the hidden members Discord community plus a couple of proprietary indicators master options would be like learning technical analysis but with regard to the derivative products options to be very clear and then the and then the jewel indicators is literally just access into the jewel indicators so Let's get back on over to, into the live scene. I'm going to turn that off. I do want to always remind people that um, all my programs are designed for people who typically want to do this as a living, typically more um, professional type people looking to make a career change or, or younger guys uh, who just want to get into trading and they know that they want to do some trading. So it typically comes down to that. And I want to be very clear in stating this, that for most people, these programs are going to be complete overkill. You don't need to buy them unless if you really want to go that one step deeper. For most people who might have another job, might be you know focused on other things and trading is just a hobby, I suggest, I fully suggest just taking advantage of all my free content. I have plenty of free playlists in, um, in my YouTube channel, which will take you you know from from zero to pretty competent um, if you want to take a step further then that's when I'd suggest taking uh, taking one of those programs but again it's not gonna be applicable for most people out there and I always want to be very 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 adamant about that because I have no intention to, to sell anything to someone who doesn't need it because again I don't make my money from I don't make my money from selling these programs I make from my money from trading which is what I hope to show. Anyways, with all that said, I should also announce that I am looking for a animated graphics designer to do a few more little small things for the channel. I'd be happy to give you 50% off of any one of my programs if you want that, or we can do just, you know, just regular, uh, the regular old fashioned way, whatever you want, just let me know. And, uh, and very, 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 very short remedial things like three to six second animation clips. And now that I've gotten all that out, I've actually put this down in notes because I keep on forgetting. Um, let's talk about some goddamn Bitcoin magic internet money cryptocurrency action going on right now. Now, and as you can see, yesterday's daily dildo, uh, while taking a stab at the 89, or at least I consider this a stab at the 89, this cyan moving average right here at about 39, a uh, few ticks below 39.30, and actually clearing all the way down to the 50 exponential around uh, 37.50, 37.80, um, still closing right back in the middle of the range. We have essentially been going in a straight line for the past uh, couple weeks. So our week and a half. Uh, however, we do have a small change of behavior on yesterday. We did actually close below the red 10 simple moving average. I'm curious if we actually opened and closed below. I believe we did. Yes, we did. We have both opened and closed our first daily dollar below the red 10 simple moving average. Is that a death sentence in and of its own self? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And really, it's nitpicking. Of course, I want to be very adamant in stating that as far as the medium time frame direction goes, I need to see a break out of either 39.30 to the upside, and that'll be looking for a move to about 4,200 and probably beyond. By the same token, if we are going to break out to the downside, which I think is more likely, but we can certainly spend a lot more time within this range, uh, I need to see a daily total closing below the 21 exponential, which is currently actually around, it's actually above 38.20 right now. But uh, to be safe, you know, for, for safeness measures, I'd actually even just say 3,800 even, make it very simple. If we can actually close the daily total below there, I'd short the retest of that area and I'd be happy for that as I'd be looking for overall move down to the low side of the range uh, probably a quick a quickish move to about 3650 3600 and uh, and then yeah low side of the range around 3400 so that's why I'm not too you know I'm not in a huge rush to be putting on positions right now the only position that I'm holding is the same position that I've been holding for the past four months it's a short from uh, from 6300 that I began in uh, I opened it in in early November so I have no real intention to actually close this until 
um, in, in, unless if one or two things happen. If we take out 39.30 to the upside, I will close it because these will be expiring in March at the end of the month in just a couple of weeks. So if that were to happen, the medium time frame direction, I believe, would take us further, up, uh, you know, above there. So I'd happily close it and um, and, and you know and finally close the position. Uh, by the same token, if um, if you know if Bitcoin, as long as Bitcoin's below that 39.30 100-ish area, I'll actually just keep it open and look to be up, look to be rolling that position onto the June futures as uh, I still am overall bearish as long as Bitcoin has not hit all my major macro um, areas for switching around them from from switching around the uh, the mark cycle does that mean that like I'm, I'm blindly shorting right here no but I'd love to start that June position if we can actually formally break 3800 now if Bitcoin does break out to the upside that's going to go that that idea will go by the weight side for a while as uh, my personal opinion is that if Bitcoin does break it out to the upside we'd probably see into the mid 4000s uh, maybe even beyond there so I'd love I'd love to hold out we actually do see that the daily 200 exponential is uh, slowly making its way down it's all the way at uh, 4700 right now um, would that be a potential target if it actually broke onwards and upwards well there's a lot of things to get through beforehand I, I think 4400 would be a little bit more reasonable um, then we can reassess from there but uh, but again I my my big point is that for the next big trade the next big you know you know, potential uh, whole, you know, hodl trade, I suppose you could say, um, you know, I, I, I want to keep my eyes out for that. That's that's essentially my disposition right now. Whether it happens from this area or whether we pump up above, it's irrelevant to me. You know, as a trader, um, I'm agnostic in this range. Yes, I do think that it breaks down. Yes, I'm going to be bearish in a bearish market. But that's, you know, a little bit of patience can go a long ways. I, I really, I really like to state this a lot because this is this is my streamer account, which again is a very small account. It has uh, well under ten Bitcoin right now, as I've actually taken a, taken quite a few out. Um, but uh, but 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 with just one trade, where this uh, this position actually was about two times the size. Um, you know, it's how much, how many of those trades you need to find per year to make a living? Well, not not many. Uh, so that's really what I want to get out here. Of course, you know the fun is on the lower time frames when Bitcoin's wicking around. Like we had a hundred fifty dollar range yesterday on this uh, massive Darth Maul dildo, just very powerful, very girthy, and very veiny. But at the end of the day, you know, what has really changed after that? Nothing. And is that real trading? Well, you can certainly make some trades. And I know a lot of people did, myself included, taking a trade off this uh, blue box territory right here that we'd had, that we've had drawn in for uh, the last few weeks. Um, and that's really all I can, that's really all I can do in these sorts of ranges is play like the, play like the major areas. And I didn't even get most of it. I actually, I sold about 38, uh, 80, 38, 85. And then I closed actually 38, uh, 3,800, even then 3810. So, uh, so, so I actually didn't even play that perfectly. Anyways, um, but you know, you, you can make money on those. No doubt about that. I don't want to discount that, but I also want to be clear in stating that, uh, that's not how I want to be, you know, making, making a living. Um, rather make it easy for myself. Anyways, while we are here on the two-hour total time frame, you can see that price action is just slowly but surely crawling its way forwards. Our more preliminary support is actually right here around the 200 exponential, uh, 3830. Our more preliminary resistance is actually this area that we drew in yesterday at 30, uh, 3870. We did take an, I do consider this another test um, last night at uh, on this little on this little run up to about 68 bucks. Uh, but as far as I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is just a very tight consolidation. We see volatility falling down across the board to multi-year lows, and uh, you know, even looking at the oscillators, not getting all that much. I mean, you know, two hours, two hour RSI would be, I suppose, a little bit more on the bear side, just kind of consolidating in the neutral zone while losing uh, losing the exponential right here. But it's, you know, it's really splitting hairs. Uh, two hour uh, Stokes are technically up, but they are, you know, they are losing momentum. They are they are getting getting a little bit tired. And two hour Jewel is kind of out of resistance, but again. Not not something that I put all that much weight on right you know in in, in this sort of posturing uh, it's really it's I can't I can't stress this enough it's really splitting hairs and what makes this range difficult is that even if we were to break the more preliminary supports that again 3830 or 38 um, 69 3870 uh, it does. It's it's not confirmation of a greater move at large. I mean, I'd just be looking for the same move that we saw yesterday. Essentially, I'd be looking for if we broke up to the upside, another stab into the blue box territory between 39 and 39.50. Uh, sorry, 39.30. By the same token, if we did actually break 38.30 to the downside, I mean, still got to deal with the support right here at around 3,800 even. Um, <clears throat> so I'd be very agnostic as long as Bitcoin is within those areas as a trader, as an analyst. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm, I'm going to be fucking bearish in a bearish market. Uh, four hour just closed as well. What is the four hour doing? Four hour still are up in fact all of the medium time frame oscillators are up right now um although bitcoin i mean bitcoin is essentially flat so when you have these oscillators traveling up while price action is essentially flat it does imply a little bit more of a bearish nature as you know it's almost like resetting the resetting the indicators while price action does not really have any reaction so it's telling you that 
it doesn't it's not gonna take all that much to really force these things in one direction um is what I'm, is what i'm gathering from price action uh four hour is fucking around on the exponential right here on the rsi again neither bullish nor bearish mm. I mean, not not really getting anything right there. What about four hour jewel? Four hour jewel completely neutral. Uh, four hour Stokes up, as we just said. Uh, eight hour Stokes are going to be up. Eight hour Stokes actually are having a fresh cross up, but like uh, you know, like like we just stated, with this sort of price action, it's not too convincing. Um, that's I, I'd interpret that as a little bit more of a bearish indication. Uh, eight hour RSI trending below the exponential. That'd certainly be, be a little bit more of a bearish RSI. In fact, only consulting between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone for the past couple weeks. Uh, it's not necessarily. It's not a good sign at all. Actually, uh, eight hour jewel is potentially for, potentially setting up. This would not be a not be a setup that I'd take. I do not ever take. You know, if, if you have access to the jewel, I just want to be very clear. If, if you ever get a signal right in the middle of the range, I, I never take them. I only take them to more critical zones, not because they don't work from the middle. They they do, but I want to take like the ones that are just in your face screaming what to do because those those are typically the ones that work out. Uh, ten hour, um, ten hour, ten hour Stokes are up actually having just a fresh cross up on the last tick, but trending below the exponential on the RSI. So to me. As long as Bitcoin kind of stays flat in this area without breaking 70 bucks to the upside, uh, this is just using up the oscillators, just using them up as the overall trend still slowly grinds as verified by the RSI, as verified by the price action. But stokes are kind of, um, what do you want to call it? Like a ranging indicator is how I relate it. Uh, actually, you know, traveling back up. Uh, 12 hour, I believe, are still down. 12 hour stokes are down, heading right into the neutral zone. But you see the same sort of signature here on the RSI, actually, a rejection right off the exponential and trending below it, which to me is a more bearish setup. Not only that, but if we go to the very high time frames, well, I mean, very high time frames, so a two day and a three day, uh, we do see two day stokes still down. I believe we did we get a new tick on that last night? No, we got a new one tonight. Um, but barring any sort of, uh, you know, bar barring any sort of move back above about uh, 3970, 3980, 30, uh, likely will stay down. Um, I do see here on the two-day digital time frame, though, that we are using the 21 exponentials very, very obviously as support. So, you know, where is that coming in around? About 3,800. You know, we have that whole area encompassing between about 38 to 3,820. Um, whichever one, you know, whichever one gets taken out first, it's, you know, it's we're, we're looking at a daily and a two-day. It's probably going to come into confluence with each other. That's my point. It's, it's we're kind of we're kind of in the dead days right now. Um, but as long as we're above the 21, you know, more importantly, I would be, again, I'd be agnostic as a trader. Uh, Three-day. Three day, same sort of thing. When where do you see the three day twenty one exponential coming in right around? Just a little bit above thirty eight hundred. So again, we have a very obvious support and resistance, which are going to really control, kind of like be the flood, you know, the, the the gatekeepers for this next medium term direction on the market. I can't stress this enough. If Bitcoin does break above thirty nine thirty, I would not be bearish in the medium, sorry, in the low or medium time frames. If Bitcoin breaks below thirty eight hundred, I would be immediately bearish on all of the time frames. Higher time frames, I would still not. Uh, higher time frames, I'd still be bearish on, even if we did break above 39.30. Uh, um, until those triggers are met, which we can talk about in a second. But while we're here on the three day, I do want to talk about the three day stokes, which are still down. They are kind of losing momentum, but more importantly. To me, this is uh, still a continuation of, of the trend that we've seen in the past. This trend line going all the way back from December of 2017 when Bitcoin has, was at uh, 20,000. And to me, whoops, why? Why did it just set a, uh, that's, very, that's very strange. Did not mean to do that. Um, but to me, you know, we are obviously having major resistance along this area. And it's very interesting that we actually turned down on this last tick right here in early May. Sorry, March. We're in March. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Um, time is flying, but not that fast. Jesus Christ, man, that'd be scary scary. I already have so many gray hairs. It's really depressing actually sometimes. Um, anyways, getting, you know, turning back down around this trend line is, is significant to me because it's telling me that we're still respecting it. And this has got, this has grabbed pretty much all of the major highs of the past like year and a few months. Again, this was your high at 20,000. This was your high at uh, 10,000 in May uh, on that bull trap. This was your high in early August at 8,400 on that bull trap. And once again, we've hit this line, we've hit this, we've, we've hit this trend line and, uh, and actually turned right down from it. And to me, this is also a rejection of getting to the more bullish control zone. So 
this is of great interest as as long as we are respecting this trend line i'd imagine that you know pressure is down and this has been calling tops of, of extremely well extremely well for over a year now and the trend is your friend until the end of the trend as i like to say i mean it's not that i i didn't make that one up of course but my point is that hey it's you know it works until it doesn't um so let's get on over to the let's get let's go back on over to the daily so you know again i think that it's very important to talk about all of the confluent factors coming in around this 39 30 hundred ish area 30 3900 or 3930-ish, we'll call it, which as you can see right here on the daily is essentially where all of the last rejections have come from and also meeting up with the Cyan 89 exponential right here. Again, pretty much right at 3930. Not only that, if we put on the drawing tools, you will see that the 236 Fibonacci retracement coming in right around that area. And we also have some nice uh, horizontal trend lines coming in and originating from late November when Bitcoin really initiated the more intense dumpage of this uh, of this aggressive downtrend. Now, if we go to the higher time frames, we actually see more confluent factors coming around the same area. We can go to the two week, which been showing this for for a long time so you probably might get bored might, might get might be getting bored of this but the two week 10 simple moving average has been stifling price action for for over a year now we've been an, unable to both open and close a two week total above it since uh since middle of january in 2018 and each and every time that we've gotten up to it that has been the ma the major rejection and where are we right now where is it coming in right now 3900 3900 and we will be getting another tick on this we will be setting this one in stone um sunday at 8 p.m eastern time and not only that but as long as we are respecting this 10 simple moving average right here there's a lot of things to be aware of on this chart as this price action i would um, I, I would consider consolidation verified by the corrective price structure and also the volume signature which would which to me would say consolidation this says corrective so corrective consolidation likely to be resolved to the downside especially as long as we are respecting this 10 simple moving average right here which has been the trend for over a year now and getting these two moving averages crossing to the downside right here this would be a bear cross of the 21 and the 55 to me that is telling me that the trend is slowly but surely grinding its way down and they're gaining divergence away from each other so it's strengthening well with all those things as again keyword as long as we're below that 3900 resistance i would be looking at this to to denote the next move on this consolidation now of course this can take a long time this is a two-week total time frame so you know each and every one tick is two weeks represents two weeks um so this could take you know probably another couple of weeks i'd imagine uh monthly over here monthly is very interesting as well we got the same sort of reasons coming in, in the same sort of area this is the green 50 exponential coming in right around where right around 3900 and that ha that was broken for the first time in bitcoin's history in december of last year during this more aggressive downtrend literally the first time in bitcoin's history and since then we've been unable to get above it or sorry maintain above it i should say we have one two three and perhaps working on four rejections right at this area to me this again is a consolidation i think it's a little bit easier to see on the higher time frames but we just looked at it on the two week and we can also look at it on the three day you know it looks all the same uh, but more importantly as these two moving averages right here approach to the the red 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential that is a very important one to me because that is something that i that i've typically used in traditional markets to get some major trending trades and if they were to actually confirm to the downside if we actually did confirm a bear cross on these guys which we likely will on the next tick they're very close they're kissing but they're not quite there just yet um then i would immediately become instantly very bearish and looking for this consolidation to be resolved to the downside probably towards the next major uh the, the next major support on the higher time frames this is talking about the macro so this isn't going to happen like one day it's going to happen in like you know months um but i'd be looking down towards the uh the 89 somewhere right around 2500 on the monthly um which would make sense we got a lot of other things actually pointed around this area around that area which we can go back on over into on the uh, bitstamp chart right here which essentially you know this this 2300 to 2600 area is represented by this blue box territory also what we just saw in the monthly you do see that the 886 fibonacci retracement is right around this area which is actually where bitcoin did about a mountain 2014 2015 mark cycle we also see some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming in around all the way from uh early 2017 and sorry middle of 2017 and you do see some major massive uh high value notes being thrown down in this area by the way you will notice that uh once we lose the 3400 support there is nothing doing and no one's doing business all the way till mid to low 2000s according to the volume profile which if you remember the last time that we had kind of a setup like this this was at 6000 and once we lost 6000 this last high value note it was, it was just a straight shot down just fucking flush them out all the way to to uh to high 3000s um now of course this happened over the you know over the course of a couple of weeks um uh, but for all intents and purposes it was quite intense and quite fast which is what i'd imagine if if we saw a 3400 break would likely look like all the way down to uh mid to low 2000s but of course um with that said uh as far as macro time frames go you know 
there's two ways of looking at this. The first way would be the more traditional way and probably the way that I'm more aligned with. And I would say, you know, as long as we are making lower highs, I'm going to be overall bearish. We are certainly still making lower highs. Um, and, uh, and I would be even bearish within this consolidation. A lot of people also say that because we've filled the 200 simple moving average, uh, down here, this pink moving average, uh, that, you know, it's, it's, you want to be a little more neutral, which I agree. You do want to be more neutral, but on the medium timeframes, higher timeframes, I disagree because, well, you know, that's, it's been the fucking trend. Um, so, but more importantly, what I can say that, uh, that would fill both and that I can really agree with as a trader is that if we did break the 200 simple moon average, or sorry, maybe better put until Bitcoin breaks the 200 simple moon average, it's not appropriate to be super bearish down for a next leg down. Uh, and that 200 simple moon average is coming in right, ab right above 3,400. So as long as Bitcoin's maintaining that, you don't want to be super bearish from a macro perspective looking for the big trade downwards. Now, I do believe that Bitcoin probably breaks to the downside. Um, again, we'll, we'll go over the things that I need to see for me to change my mind on that. But for now, uh, as long as Bitcoin's below this 200 exponential, let's actually just get into the conversation right now. Uh, there's three big things that I'm looking for to kind of change my opinion on the macro direction for Bitcoin. If as uh, and the first thing is this, and the first thing is quite important. I uh, I put a lot of weight on it, but it's not everything. And it would be both opening and closing and weekly total above this purple 200 exponential moving average right here at around 4100. If Bitcoin could do that, I'd massively change around my my tone on Bitcoin, not like phase, but you know, my regular tone, um, I massively turn around, change around my, 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 my tone on, uh, on Bitcoin. I'd probably be looking for a move to the deep 4,000s actually, maybe 47, 4,800, um, test the daily 200, uh, 200 around there. Um, by the same token, uh, would that necessarily, you know, say that the bearish market is over? No, it would not. The next one that I'm going to show you is something that I would I would feel comfortable with saying. If Bitcoin could just close above the yellow 21 exponential, which is all the way at uh, 5,200, that I would immediately get bullish off of. You'll even notice in the past history, Bitcoin, when it actually did lose the 21 exponential for the last time in 2014, 2015, when it, once it regained it right here, that was actually the perfect entry into a forward momentous upwards market, which is very important. I don't want to be stuck in a sideways market. I want to be stuck. I want to be stuck in an upwards market. Um, so if that, you know, if that actually changed it, that would be pretty big. And of course, from my background, I used to be a market maker and uh, authorized trader on New York Stock Exchange Arca, which. I would look at the monthly 21 exponential to judge if a stock fin equity, you know, which has typically, you know, multi years of, of history, uh, which Bitcoin actually does have now, uh, to judge if it was generally bullish or generally bearish. And as you can see, well, Bitcoin's been living under it for quite some time now. Um, so I'm going to be overall bearish as long as we're below there. Now, the third and final and most important thing, but you're probably, you know, you're probably going to know beforehand uh, that Bitcoin's actually switched around the market side if, if, is if it gets back above 6,000, the area of breakdown, uh, because Bitcoin spent about a year going sideways at the 6,000 area, it is absolutely critical. And it's the most traditional way of doing it if Bitcoin gets back above it had zero reason to be bearish on it if that were to happen. Uh, but for now, you know, as long as we're down around here, I uh, I will remain uh, of that disposition, of that former disposition in being bearish. It's been working for the past uh, over a year. And... I'll use it until, uh, you know, go with it until it doesn't work. Uh, let's go check out. So we've checked out all of the higher time frames, and we looked at all the confluences between that 3,900 level. Let's actually go over to CME's right now and see what they're looking like. As CME's chart, I think, is better. I think, I think it just works better. And as you can see right here, we have a nice trend line originating all the way from late November, which has grabbed one, two, three, four, five. I mean, do you want to call this six now? This is not a confirmed local high just yet, um, but grabbed you know f about five highs over the past uh, over the past three four months, which is very important because the CME chart I think gets the price action the best out of anything because. It's you know it's the most professional exchange trading this thing, and also the one that actually trades. Cbo doesn't trade. In fact, they they I think they canceled their March futures contracts, um, which is not a good sign. I don't I don't look at that as as a very good thing. Um, anyways, with that said, you can see right here on the CME is that there we've only been printing lower highs. And what does this look like? I mean, it looks like it looks like a pennant. It looks like a triangular formation. It looks like a triangular consolidation. Again, as verified by the volume metrics, as verified by by the price action, the corrective nature. And to me, you know, that would that would actually likely in, in you know likely suggest a downwards conclusion. 
um, to this. But you know, while we are grinding this 3900 area right here, which again coming right around that same areas that we see, saw in all the higher time frames on spot, uh, I respect it until you know and, until told otherwise. If Bitcoin could could close a daily doodle above 3900, I'd immediately get bullish towards a move towards you know, again 4200 right around here would make about sense um, and probably beyond. Again, probably beyond after that, you know, you'd probably sell off on, on first pass and then uh, and then reaccumulate. Um, but while we're here, let's look at the daily oscillators. Daily stokes are still up, so fair enough. That'd be a good sign. Daily RSI is very neutral, but could could easily could could easily confirm a, a, a nice bull move today. Uh, but overall, you see on the RSI, we've just been also in between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone for the past you know four or five months. Um, sorry, four months since November. And that to me is just very indicative of what this consolidation is doing. Again, unable to get into the bullish control zone, unable to really break out of this area as of yet. I mean, if, if again, if we do break above 3,900, I would be looking for that move. I wouldn't be looking for that move. I mean, it's, you know, that's, that's, that, that would be the point to make as far as I'm concerned. Um, Let's go down to the lower time frames. What are they saying? We got four hours right here. Four hour stokes are just freshly crossing up, but going sideways, as you can see, uh, four hour RSI is printing a little bit of divergence, I think. Yeah, very slight amount of divergence, but uh, I suppose it does count. Really fucking uh, picking at uh, threads right now. Um, but this, you know, this consolidation, actually, you could make the argument that is a little bit more constructive than the one on spot charts. Uh, yes, we do have the same, you know, very ugly wick that we saw yesterday. Uh, but this, you know, could it could it morph into some sort of an accumulation pattern? Um, it could. Really, don't want to see it lose 3,800 though. So um, again, 3,800 being the critical area that uh, uh, that is. Here's what the four-hour jewel says. Uh, coming into some resistance, but again, I don't take I don't take uh, signals in the middle of that. And it's very and it's very revealed re revealing to me that that the jewel is essentially in the middle of all time frames right now which I mean all time frames above like an hourly which tells me that as of right now this is quite neutral you know it's it's it would technically be setting up for perhaps a little bit you know if I had to save one direction probably be a little bit more slanted to the downside but uh, my point is is that we can really spend more time within this range and tightening this up um, going over here to the Bitcoin historical volatility index uh, where is it there you are Bvol, uh, you can see that historically speaking, we are at multi-year lows for volatility. I mean, Bitcoin really does not like to stay below this two marker for too long, and we've been below it for um, about a week now. About a week. The last time that uh, yeah, the last time that we were below it was in November of last year. That was you know the consolidation before breaking down from six thousand to three thousand. The time before that was you know a year ago in uh, twenty seventeen, uh, during more bullish consolidations. Obviously, again, doesn't tell you which which direction it's going to go, but does tell you that a big move is likely in coming. Which we'll get back on over here to spot and see what spot is doing. Um, as uh, I'm curious what the historical volatility rank is uh, is doing right now, as I haven't checked on that in a few days, and I'm curious. So let's see. Shout out to my man, Bali Poor, as always, for putting this one together. Does make life a lot easier, actually. Um, yeah, historical volatility rank is it's 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 a little bit different. We need to go to a different exchange. A um, little bit different. A little bit different. Um, it would be giving us a different read, and we do have something going on like this. Is what it looks like. So. We likely will get a nice move, but it probably won't. The next move probably won't be the big move, is what this is telling me. That's actually a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit discouraging, because um, I would be looking for another another move to kind of fulfill this trend line. We've had one, two, three. That does make a trend. If we, if we filled it out a little bit more, that would kind of tell me that uh, the whole thing is just getting it's just one step closer to the ultimate move, but not quite there just yet, which, again, actually quite revealing. So, again, uh, that is the that is the benefit of using something like this. I don't know why this alert is going on right there. I don't want that alert. Um, but historical volatility rank is overall that of consolidation. Uh, lower time frames, same sort of thing right here. Same sort of thing. Can have another spike, but uh, suggesting that the move is still in its infancy still needs to consolidate more most likely um for for uh, for for like the greater move of course on the very low time frames you're going to get you know these this flighty price action here and there just like we saw yesterday but as far as like the medium time frames being resolved that's what i'd be saying 
Okay, all right, let's go check out GBDC. How do you close out today? Uh, unched, actually, completely unchanged from um, from the morning. Uh, what would I say about GBDC right here on the four hour look? You know, we actually did hold on to this trend line, this this uh, this kind of Mimi trend line that we put in yesterday, actually kind of, actually originating all the way back from here. Uh, now that I look at it, uh, still holding on to it, although it does look weak to me. Four hour stokes are still down. Uh, let's get rid of this. There we go. Uh, four hour RSI is just popping back up to test uh, likely the exponential right at the neutral zone. So, you know, probably gonna, uh, I'd say that's a little bit more of a bear setup. But if you go down here to the hourly, I mean, the hourly looks looks like another bounce off this trend line, which it holds until it doesn't, holding up above the uh, the, the pink 200 simple as well, which is quite powerful. Um, it's going to really depend on where we open today up. I'd imagine that uh, if today does open down, if we open down, I would be I, I would be bearish on this actually. Uh, if we open up, if we if, especially if we open up above four dollars and fifty nine cents, I'd actually be I'd actually be looking for another stab towards thirty nine thirty thirty nine uh, thirty nine hundred most likely if that would happen. But for now. Now, yes, we actually have open and close a daily total below, or did we open it? Yeah, no, we did not open yesterday's daily total below the 21. So we've actually just closed a couple daily doles below it, but we've not, but we've not been able to both open and close one below it. So I really need to see where today's ones open. Do we open down or up? If we open down, uh, it's still not a death sentence just yet. Need to take out about four dollars and forty cents, which I'll put in an alert right now. Uh, by the same token, it does look like it wants some up right here. Uh, lower time frame oscillators are up, just like we see on um, on spot market. Markets uh, four hour technically down, but you know we got our, we got a twelve hour actually snaking down. What about ten hour? Or sorry, what about daily? Daily down as well. Huh? Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, now we have something to look at. Uh, daily daily RSI is presenting triple touch bearish divergence one two three and back below the exponential. Um, I would say that this is overall more bearish setup on the higher time frames and. Uh, has been has been pretty good and historically speaking when we get these daily little uh, stoke crosses actually i'm just going to go back go back in time yes we got this high right here we're crossing again right now we got this high right here got this high right here got this high right here i know that you guys can't see that but i'm but i'm referring to this one this one this one and this one and we've actually just freshly crossed daily stokes down once again right here rejecting getting into the bullish control zone as well and also closing below the daily 21 but with the big wick to the downside makes it really fucking difficult Jesus Christ, man. I need to take a sip of this, this water, guys. I'm damn thirsty. Oh, man. So much better. Alrighty. Um, yeah, that's what I have to say about GBDC. Higher time frames, uh, bearish, lower time frames, uh, slightly neutral to bullish. Um, okay, cool. So I think we spoke about most of the things that I want to speak about. Let's actually uh, let's actually go to Bitcoin longs and shorts. And uh, longs a little bit under twenty two thousand, shorts a little bit under twenty one thousand. So we're still maintaining that same sort of ratio between them. Still very low on both counts. But as long as as long as the longs are oh sorry on real time, it's actually quite different. Real time shorts and longs is twenty one eight hundred longs versus twenty one three hundred shorts. So they are very rapidly converging on each other, and this tells me that likely fireworks soon for a decent move. Now, is is it a macro shifting move? Well, as we saw in the historical volatility rank, I would be skeptical as of right now. But but if the if these actually were to were to interchange. Then that would be the first interpretation of something new going on. Anyways, let's actually go look at them. Jesus Christ, man. Just go look at them, Crown. Um, talk to myself in third person. Wow. Need help, man. Need help. Uh, the trend has been for the past year that each and every time that the shorts get down in this red box territory, major jumps have emerged. Basically, all the same areas that we looked at you know, on the three-day. But uh, this was your double top at 12,000 in February last year, 2018. This was your top in uh, at 10,000 in May last year. This was your top at uh, 8,400. In August last year, this was your top at 6,300 before we moved down to uh, 3,000. And once again, we've gone in this blue, in this red box territory and rallying off of it. I mean, pe basically people putting on short positions off of it, which does tell me that if we are going to see this trend continue, it likely emerges from this area, which is what I've been saying for the past um, for the past week, ever since we actually crawled ourselves out of here. So if you know if bears really are truly going to dump and take over, I'd imagine that they do it from this area, and relatively soon, um, relatively soon, meaning in the next in the next couple of weeks. I do think that we get resolution on the medium time frames in the next two weeks, actually before the end of the month, uh, at the latest at the end of the month. Now, if Bitcoin is quite literally right here at the end of the month, then I. That would be very strange. It would, it would be it would be hard to interpret it. Actually, it'd be very difficult to interpret. 
Um, I think I'd probably have to just wait for it to, I'd, I'd have to wait for a little while. Um, if that, if that would happen, I don't think that happens. So I, I think it's very unlikely. I think that we do get resolution before the end of the month. Um, anyways, so yeah, shorts getting interest and they're about 600 away from, uh, from the longs, uh, longs quite low as well though. Longs extremely low. So no one's playing the game right now, which tells me that there's a, sh there's probably a shit ton of open interest, which does mean that, uh, you know, explosive moves can happen during that time. Can we change the medium time frames around? That's a real question, which I'd like to, which I'd like resolution on, uh, before I put on some real positions. Um, I'm curious, let's go check out Japan. What's Japan doing? Japan has been looking different, uh, different recently and Japan basically in the same area 89 exponential 21 exponential right here uh did close above all major or, or, or did close above the 10 simple yesterday uh, so that'd be more bullish and is maintaining as long as it maintains this 40 uh 40 430 000, uh, uh yen area uh good I'm curious what the also to say four hour stokes looking a little bit tired two hour stokes are Looking a little bit tired. Hourly stokes are down. What about eight hour? Eight hour should be up. Yeah, eight hour is going to be up. What about 12 hour? 12 hour is looking tired, but wants to cross up. And daily is up. So Japan actually looks more bullish to me. Japan does look more bullish to me. And uh, has Japan been leading the market recently, though? And that's where I'd say no. I used to look at them as market leaders when Bitcoin was above 6,000 and they were, but I haven't seen that same trend uh, as of recent times. But I would say that Japan is more bullish um, than, than US spot markets. Okay, uh, let's go check out traditional markets really quick. Uh, 281 and a quarter. So we did close another daily dolo above this horizontal trend line right here at about 281, and that is well, that's a pretty good, pretty good sign. Uh, is it the most is it the most inspiring dolo of all time? No, it's pretty lackluster. It's pretty anemic. It's pretty un unindicative of follow through. But the trend line is taken out until it's not. And I would not be bearish on this. I, I would not be bearish on this. I mean, first and foremost, from a medium time from perspective until 272 is taken out. But more importantly, uh, from like the very low time frame, as long as it's above 281, I'd be cautiously, optimistically bullish. I mean, it did technically break out. The volume is extremely anemic. The volume ext is extremely suspect. Uh, the hourly right here is maintaining above 281 as well. You can see multiple tests on this area. But volume is very scary. We are even, did we, we printed a little bit of bearish divergence right here, but not, uh, I think we've already played that out. Um, hourly stokes are down. What about four hour? Four hour stokes are up. Daily stokes are fresh cross up. So that would certainly be more bullish on the higher time frames. And I do think that, you know, it's, it's to be respected as long as it's above this area. I mean, shit, we could even brought, we could even drop all the way back to about 279 and a half, fill this gap and then pop back up. I would, my point is, is that I don't want to be bearish on a chart that just had a fresh daily little golden cross right Right here, the green 50 and the purple 200 um, getting respected pretty damn well so far. So as long as we are again above, you know, especially above 272, not bearish in the medium time frames. As long as we're above 281, not bearish in the lower time frames. If we do lose 281, I would be looking for a move down to about 279 and a half, and that's what I'd be looking for a trade. Um, Let's go to the higher time frames. What does a month or sorry, what does a weekly look like? Weekly looks weekly looks good, man. Uh, we we just got a pretty damn good cross right here on the exponentials, um, and respect you know living above all major moving averages. Even took out the high of last week. Uh, I, I like it. Uh, weekly Stokes up and they can stay up for a while. Weekly RSI looking looking all right, looking healthy, getting out, get you know maintaining the bearish. Uh, sorry, maintaining the neutral zone for the first time in a long time, which would suggest what you know more um, more stability going in, but. It's, I mean, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say that. It looks it, it looks a little bit suspect over here. It looks really suspect, actually. But hey, uh, those would be my levels. Again, 279.5 if 281 breaks. Um, but as long as 281's holding, uh, no real reason to be bearish. Uh, so there are some things saying that the chart's getting a little bit tired. But um, even if it came back down to 279.5, I wouldn't be bearish until it breaks that, but even then, breaking 279 and a half is not a death sentence in and of its own. You got support right here at about 276, uh, 277, and then of course the big one at 272 and a half. If 272 and a half is broken, then yes, I would become bearish on the medium time frames. But for now, you can see that it's got a lot, to, you know, it's got a lot of lot, lot to chew through at the current moment in time. Anyways, uh, I mean, just looking at the volume metrics down here, it is. It is a little bit scary, <laughs> but fair enough, man. Fair enough. Let's go check out. Um, let's go check out the top shit coins now. Uh, we got uh, BNB. What's BNB doing? Um, 
still maintaining actually still maintaining uh, i do see bearish divergence forming on the daily which is typically quite powerful daily jewel is setting up for a sell as well not quite there it's going to take a few more days to fully get it on a daily but a daily signal would be extremely powerful and um you know do, does it get another run towards those prior highs it, i mean it looks like it wants to it really looks like it's trying to reaccumulate this area I mean that this is trying to do something like this right now and and making a uh, making a ascending triangle. Um, I mean I, I suppose if it does take, uh, break above the top of this ascending triangle above fifteen dollars and thirty three cents, I'd be looking for a move. Um, what's the measure move going to print? Uh, it's probably going to be uh, a couple of bucks. Yeah, about two seventeen, I'd imagine. Yeah, two, oh, oh two, to this next horizontal right here. Perfectly, actually. 17, um, 17 and, and about 18, 19 cents. So not bad. Uh, more importantly, if it actually does break this to the downside, which we are we are, we are are showing tons of signs of um, of getting a little bit tired, I would be looking for a move down to, first and foremost, $13.88. If that area fails, I would be looking for a full move down to eight, uh, $12.85. If that move fails, I'd be looking for the full retrace of this last move to $11.77. And, uh, and uh, B. BNB has been doing its own thing consistently, so it does stand out in that regard amongst Bitcoin, amongst Buterol, amongst Mrs. Litecoin. So I don't really, you know, I don't apply the same sort of things to it. Uh, he can do his own thing. And right now, I would respect this consolidation until told otherwise, although there are certainly a lot of signals saying that's uh, saying, you know, it's it probably wants to break down, which would be my disposition, especially when looking at the greater market. But like I just said, uh, I put BNB in its own category almost. Uh, let's go to Zcash. What's Zcash doing? Last I looked at it, it was grinding up against resistance. Are we still there? Are we actually are right there. Right at resistance. Also, the green 50 exponentials, you can see coming in right around 54 bucks, which as long as we are grinding this area, this is still in the context of a descending triangle, which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern. And, uh, you know, is it possible that 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 Zcash, Electricoin, whether the fuck coin, the real Bcash breaks up to the upside from this area? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. As I check them out of the screen, looking fine. Okay, great. Um, if that would happen, I would be looking for a quick move to about 60 bucks. But uh, like I said, this is a bearish pattern. We do see daily stokes getting way up there as we grind this resistance once again. Daily RSI is overall, I'd say, bearish. We are actually making a massive rising channel here, which typically is going to have a downside resolution, something like that over a very long period of time the last uh, four months um and of course you know it's it's, it's just gonna be lumped in with the rest of the uh with the rest of the cones it's gonna do whatever the, the majors do essentially bcash same thing still in the context of a descending triangle did close above the 21 yesterday but you can see that resistance is coming in right around here right around the 50 which to me is saying that uh the range the 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 range that b is 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 like this <sighs> In, in the very short time frames, uh, one 134 to the upside, 126 and a, and a quarter to the downside. Uh, Tron Cash, what's he doing? Probably still rallying off this uh, support. Yes, he is. Nice. Uh, I'm pretty agnostic on this one as well. I guess if I had to pick direction, I'd probably say up from here. Maybe retest about two and a half cent once again. Um, if two and a half cent can be broken to the upside, I would be looking for a move, perhaps all the way back to about 2.9 cent. By the same token, though, it does seem to be the, it does seem to be the area of operation between the 200 simple and that two and a half cent region right here. This broken trend line is essentially, and also the 200 exponential on the daily. If we do break to the downside, I would be looking for a full move down to about 1.9 cent. Uh, Neo Cash, what's Neo Cash doing? Uh, did we close yesterday above this horizontal right here? Mm, not quite. 9.40ish uh, area, getting the uh, getting the action. What about Daily Stokes? Daily Stokes up, looking good. Daily RSI, looking... Actually printing a little bit of bearish divergence here, but not, uh, not a death sentence. I, I don't think that... I think that's also unconfirmed. Lower time frames, it will be confirmed, however. Uh, we do see, yeah, one, two, getting kicked out of the bullish control zone. I think that this, you know, in the low time frames, probably comes back down at least to about $9, $9.10. Uh, but the real question is, you know, this is your obvious support right here for this whole consolidation at 880. Sorry, 890, actually. Uh, if 890 breaks, I would be looking for a full move down to about 775. Uh, by the same token, if we do break up uh, 940 to the upside, I would be looking for a move back over to the prior high at 11 bucks. Uh, EOS Cash, what's EOS Cash doing? Mm, still in overall rising channel major resistance right here at the 200 simple at uh four dollars even or a little bit below four dollars now about 395 and uh major support right here right on the 21 exponential you know same thing as the other majors 360 if 360 does break to the downside we'll be looking for a move down to about 330 um looking a little bit weaker did lose a 10 simple on the last tick and um uh, yeah o overall not as good as the posturing uh did get a sell signal on the jewel right here on the daily which typically should be quite powerful yeah right here 
Uh, did it already play out? I'd, I'd, I'd argue no, it has not played out just yet. Uh, you're usually going to get much more of a move on a daily signal for the jewel, even if it is coming from the medium or sorry, the, the middle grade area, which I, again, I don't like taking trades in there. Uh, let's go check out um, Mr. Ripple, Mr. Ripple's nipples. Free the nipple. No, he's still stuck in this ascending triangle. He can't get it. It's like a mind that can't get out. Uh, each and every time that we've tested this, this, this ascending uh, trend line here, going all the way back from late January or sorry, late uh, December, it's been rejection city. Even all these wicks. Yes, we have have formed another tr another rising trend line right here getting one two three four five six lows uh but i think we've touched it enough the next move will likely break this one it is too damn full it is too damn full and if we do break it up to the upside we'd be looking for a move to about 33 and a half cent the the whole picture will start to change at about 34 and a half cent right here this horizontal that would actually start to change the medium time frames but as you can see right now, it's got a lot of work to do. If it does break out to the downside on the very low time frames right here, below 30 and a half cent, it's not a death sentence either. Either the death sentence is 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 moving below about 28 and a half cent right here. If that were to happen, I would be looking for a move down to uh, to low 20 cents to high teen cents area right around here from your former base. Um, let's see what the uh, let's see what the oscar is doing. Daily Stokes are up. Daily RSI is daily. Sorry, I I, I would say it's more bearish actually. Um, so yeah. Let's go check out, uh, you want to look at Monero Cash, 52 bucks. Actually taking another formal stab towards the upper resistance of this whole consolidation, but still just that, a consolidation as verified by the volume uh, signature, as verified by the price structure. Major resistance right here at 54 and a third. Uh, major support for the whole formation at uh, 46 and a quarter. Whichever one breaks first is going to be your next macro direction, actually. And we're actually, we are closer to breaking it up to the upside. Uh, one of the more bullish ones, actually. Stellar Cash. Uh, Stellar Cash getting rejected right at this trend line, actually. Uh, getting rejected right at this trend line. Yes, we did have a little bit of a fake out yesterday, but that's okay. Uh, it does look to me like we have some continuations. We have a rejection dildo and down. So I do think that this probably comes back down all the way somewhere around at least 10 cents and perhaps even nine and a half cents. But I would be looking for a bounce within that range as I wouldn't be bearish on this guy just yet. Uh, Daily Stokes are getting up there. They are getting a little bit tired, it looks like. Daily RSI looks okay. But when we go down to the four hour, we do see one, two, three stabs of bearish divergence, which is uh, usually going to get played out. And I would be, I'd certainly be looking for that move to about 10 cents. And like I said, nine and a half cents if things get a little more crazy. But I, I would also be looking for a bounce in those areas. Um, is kind of forming a, uh, an ascending broadening wedge as well, which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern, but did break out of this falling channel to the upside, which would have a measure move somewhere right around 12 and a half cents as well. Uh, let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. Let's get to the top of the top shit coins. And Mrs. Litecoin, what's she doing? Mrs. Litecoin, definitely one of the strongest of the whole bunch. Did we close yesterday's daily above the 10 simple? We did. Yeah, we did. So this 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 gal, <laughs> this gal hasn't uh, hasn't closed one below in I mean ages. And Jesus Christ, man, what's up, uh, DS Core? Good to meet you, man. Awesome. I absolutely love Twitch, so I'm glad that people are joining on Twitch. Um, this is starting to look like re this looks like reaccumulation to me. Uh, Daily Stokes are down. Daily RSI is printing quadruple touch bearish divergence one two three four kicked out of the bullish control zone and trending below the exponential so i would you know if this is going to fall down i would i like to see it fall down relatively soon we got that we got that uh move yesterday all the way to 57 and a half that we were looking for um but the fact that it's held it up relatively well so far is a good sign um you know if you did take a short right here uh i would have been taking profit um on this on this move down around here i mean this is this is actually quite a, quite a strong response um, so far. Uh, Four-hour stokes are down, actually. Four-hour RSI is looking a little bit more tired as well. So I would be saying that, you know, I, you know, if, if I had to pick direction, I would still be saying down. But uh, could it could it come be, you know, what's going to come first? Are we, another another stab to a 57 and a half or down? Well, that would be a little bit more... Uh, Maybe probably down again. Going off the daily, that's that's hard to go against right there. Very rarely do I see quadruple touch bearish divergence not get played out. I mean, that's that would be quite uncharacteristic. Uh, more importantly, though, uh, don't listen to my opinion. It's technical analysis uh, that's telling the story right here. Which fifty-seven and a half, we do break that up to the upside. I would be, I'd be bullish on. I I wouldn't be bearish anymore on on Mrs. Lechner. if she broke above fifty-seven and a half dollars and closed like a daily dolo above there. Uh, no reason to be bearish on Mrs. Litecoin, but. 
what is this? She's in the overall context of an ascending broadening wedge, which is, again is another bearish uh, pattern, which is also verified by the volume metrics right here. Perfect fall off in volume as well. And measure move on that, if it were to be initiated, would would be actually all the way down to about 43 and a quarter, 43 and a half somewhere here. Uh, but of course, but of course, as you can see, it has a lot of work to do to actually destroy that posturing. Uh, it needs to break down below $50 first, which is of, in, of great significance because that's also the daily 200 exponential. So as long as Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Litecoin is above the 200 exponential, uh, I give it the benefit of the doubt. She's a good girl. She's a good girl. Uh, let's go check out Mr. Buterall, 136. What's he doing? Um, closed the last three, sorry, the last four days. Open and closed the last, no, open and closed the last three days below the 21 exponential, giving another test to it right now, uh, right at the 382 Fibonacci retracement, which do we see any any signatures on the oscillator? No, we actually see, we see Stokes headed up while Mr. Buterall has been essentially sideways to down. Uh, again, not a good, that's, that's not a good setup in my experience. Uh, not only that, but let's get on over here to the RSI. RSI is coming back to test the exponential. I'd imagine if we do find resistance there, it's going to come into confl confluence with the 21 exponential right here. And well, you already know where I'm going with that one. Uh, let's see. Let's go down to the four hour. Um, four hour, 200 simple moon average is actually wrangled above price action, providing resistance right around that 137 ish area. So even, you know, Mr. Buterall's critical area for switching around the medium time frame perspective is actually, it needs to get above 144 on Finex or sorry, is it 143 and a half? Yeah. 143 and a half on Finex. If we can do that, then it switched around the medium time frame direction. But as you can see, it is well and far away from initiating that area in comparison to Bitcoin or Mrs. Litecoin, which are much closer prox you know, pro proximal. Um, right now we're just finding resistance right around this area, which is pretty massive, um, pretty massive resistance. I mean, when, when it gets wrangled around price, it typically stays down below for quite some time, uh, historically speaking. So I'd say even more preliminary resistance right around 137 now, which is going to be a problem. Definitely going to be a problem. Um, curious what the lower time frame also is saying. We got four hour stokes going up, price action going essentially sideways. Again, not a good, not a good setup. Uh, four, eight hour does look like it wants to actually take a little bit of a leg up though. Uh, so I would say that. Um, so yeah, I think that we covered just about everything that I want to speak about. Maybe we can just briefly go over a little bit more in Bitcoin land. Uh, do do some more, do some more extra extracurricular. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Ben. What do I sound like? Jesus fucking Christ. Feel free to always call me out if you if you think that I sound like a complete moron if I'm being too arrogant or something like that. Call me out. You be the one to call me out. You have full you have full uh, authority to do so. I give you authority to do so. Anyways, uh, back on over here to Bitcoin. I want to talk about this for a second as, uh, again, I don't believe in fractals. I don't believe that fractals can really be done, but there are a lot of tentacles, which are legitimate that are suggesting that we have a lot of similarities between this area right here and this area right here in 2014, 2015. Again, market cycles have a lot of brotherly characteristics. They're not identical twins, but they, I think the saying is like, they don't, they, 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 they don't mimic each other, but they rhyme or, or something like that. Whatever the fuck it is, you get what I'm saying. My point is, is that you get a lot of very similar behaviors uh, across different mark cycles, not because of factual, but because of legitimate tentacle reasons that typically have to do with psych psychology, which we're all, you know, we're all humans dealing with this. So you get these similar, you know, reactions, these similar, these similar signatures within the charts to kind of reflect the fact that we're all imperfect humans, which represent our, our 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 emotions you know in a, in a chart format essentially kind of depressing when you look at it like that i mean like we're basically just a human algorithm uh running off that anyways uh this area right here like i said a lot of a lot of similarities between this area right here uh first things first we'll go over the price structure you know we have a parabolic blow off top come back down put in a bull trap right here put in a descending triangle over the course of a few months and break that guy down or girl down don't don't assume genders here for about a 54 percent drawdown well we do the same thing right over here. We have a parabolic blow off top, come down, put in a descending triangle right here and drop down for a nice 52% drop down. Then after that, it actually pops back up over the course of 11 weeks, about 25%. Well, in 20, 2018, 2019, we have over the course of 17 weeks uh, pumped back up about 25% not pretty lackluster to be quite honest um which is one of the big reasons why i do not believe that the low is in but we can that's that's a conversation for another time if you want if you want the full explanation on why i don't believe that the low is in go to the playlist titled long-term analysis because it'll go through an hours long worth presentation uh with examples you know in, in very thorough uh, unlike this video right now um but also to the point now let's actually go look at some fundamental indicators let's actually put on the mbt signal which the MVT signal is the network value divided by the daily, the daily transaction value, which again, you know, is complete is completely exclusive to all of the price, volume, and time indicators that we were just looking at. And it was go back to the area in question in 2014, 2015, which was this area right here. If I zoom on in on it, 
uh, right here. And then let's actually bring up the MBT signal pane, which is right here. And you can see we have a very similar signature. We have parabolic blow off top, signal red, come down, put in your bull trap, signal red, and then we drop down in this area on that first major drop. Well, I'm gonna mark this off with a nice horizontal, and then I'm gonna fast forward into 2018, 2019. And what do we have here? We have our parabolic blow off top, come down, put in your bull trap, and then come down to the same level. We came down to the same level on a fundamental indicator that is, again, not related to price volume and time. So it's very interesting that this external factor is a green, that we are in a very similar posture in, in, in a, what could be a similar market cycle um, now obviously we've had much a much better reaction right here on the MBT signal but more importantly from the MB, MBT signal perspective we actually seen divergence in price action from the MBT signal the MBT signal is making significantly higher highs as you just saw again right here and price action is making significantly lower highs so we are actually seeing uh, well what, what, what would be bearish divergence what has produced some pretty nasty drops in the past the last time that we actually had bearish divergence on the MBT signal was right here uh, at the run to 20,000 this was this was the high at 17,000 this was the high at the 20,000 kind of what we're seeing right here and right here in a way um, or sorry backwards actually uh, so my point is is that we're actually seeing <clears throat> we're actually seeing the same sort of divergence between the we're seeing the same sort of divergence between the price and also the MBT signal. Which hold on, I want to I want to actually confirm that we actually saw the same thing back in 2014. This is quite interesting. Did we see the same thing back in 2014? Price action was making price action did make a higher high. MBT signal made a higher high as well. That is interesting. So we actually didn't get that same divergence in 2014. Strange. Very strange. Anyway, let's get back on over to the more recent times. Okay, take this guy off. And of course, now I want to talk about the moving averages that we see. And again, going, I, again, I want to separate myself from the fractals, the fucking, the fucking fractal of squirrels. Um, it's, I just imagine like a bunch of squirrels just like pricking up and going, fractal, fractal, fractal. You know, that kind of bullshit, uh, which is great, man. You got it. You got to have your fractals in your life. Um, where would we be without Hage and Re? Anyways, uh, you do see Bitcoin struggling along this yellow 20 month expansion movement right, uh, uh, average right over here, which has been very obviously the major support to break. We need to both open and close a daily total below it to officially break it. And we have been unable to do that since, you know, or early February. Um, early February was the last time that we were actually below it on the daily double time frame. Well, let's go back to 2014 and see what it looks like right over here as you can see bitcoin went into this very tight range right here very very tight range where you're getting wicks both ways just scrunching it up right along where right along the 21 exponential and it wasn't until we finally both opened and closed a daily total below the 21 exponential where doom inspired you know we we went on to the final dooms drop all the way down to the final capitulation death hole so again, um, very similar setup with this. And this is, you know, this is how you can kind of use legitimate tentacles to confirm what might be a similar mark, a similar piece of the mark cycle. And that is kind of what I'm looking at right now. So it's very interesting to me. It's very, very interesting to me. Um, if we were to lose a 21 exponential, do I think that Bitcoin is going to Im immediately capitulate from that area? Well, as we saw, it's not immediate to begin with, but I would be uh, certainly more defensive but it's not until we break the weekly 200 some moon average to the downside where I fully embrace that uh, that 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 next leg down to probably the mid to low 2000s. Uh, for now, again, as a trader, have to be agnostic. Although opinion wise, well, I'd be more bearish. Anyways, um, I think that's probably gonna do it for this morning's video. Um, I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Of course, I wanna remind you that all the programs are still on sale for 20% off for the rest of the month. And of course, more importantly, if you are a an animated graphical designer, uh, please reach out to me. I'd love to give you 50% off of any one of my programs. I'm typically, I'm, you know, I typically do these things because I, I know that I can go into like Fiverr or Upwork and get the same work done for like 100 bucks. But I want to give the opportunity to someone who's probably on the younger side or who wanted, who or who wants to get in the programs but maybe isn't, you know, financially there, and give you some way to kind of have a little bit of value arbitrage, maybe a little bit more in favor of you. But that, but that's fair enough. I'm happy to do that. Um, for, for some work. So again, I'm looking for a very specific person just because that's who I want to give the opportunity to. Anyways, um, if that sounds like you, hit me up. I'm happy to talk. I'm happy to, uh, I, I'd be happy to just chat it up. Uh, anyways, um, like I said, I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. It is Friday after all, so got to gotta get one more good one in before the weekend. Uh, looking forward to seeing you there. If not, I want to wish you well. want to wish you a very happy and very special and a very uh, not so cold <laughs> uh, morning. So again, guys, uh, take care and I'll see you soon.